Chapter 9. Coercion. Those who consciously justify torture, and are not candid enough to state that they use it to defend their own power and privilege, rely essentially on the philosophic argument of a lesser evil for a greater good. They reinforce this with an appeal to the doctrine of necessity, the existential situation forces them to make a choice between two evils. From Report on Torture, Amnesty International, 1973. Social psychologist Albert Biderman investigated and reported on how Chinese and Korean interrogators brainwashed prisoners of war in the 1956 paper Communist Attempts to Elicit False Confessions from Air Force Prisoners of War. His studies resulted in a framework, Biderman's Chart of Coercion, which has since been used in other contexts, such as domestic abuse, to understand coercive techniques. While not as extreme, Lockdown and social distancing measures bear more than a passing resemblance to the tactics featured in Biderman's chart of coercion. Dr. Harry Bunker Smith, a psychologist, also compared some of the government's tactics to psychological abuse. She told me that, there is a parallel with an abusive relationship, which I noticed because I am trained in domestic abuse. The phrases were the same. A few months in we saw that mistakes had been made. A paper came out that said lockdowns cause more harm than good in the summer. And fair enough, mistakes happen. But they kept on happening. Like people working in care homes could go in and out, but family couldn't visit their loved ones. Social isolation can kill people, it's a serious risk to be considered alongside infection with COVID. Abusers will say they won't do something again but then they keep doing it. Abuse is not constant, it's not bad all the time, you have periods of extreme abuse followed by the honeymoon period where you get flowers and apologies and promises and then things deteriorate again. She told me she believes people are getting used to being controlled by the government in a similar way. We have gone between lockdown, the extreme abuse, and more freedom, the honeymoon period, but that freedom has become controlled and authorized. The control crept in and the goalposts were moved. Again like domestic abuse, freedom becomes conditional. You wait to be told you are allowed it. And it can be removed from you. The British public are in a coercive control relationship with the government. Most people will say they are not. In fact they are not. In fact they will defend the relationship. People in an abusive relationship can get very angry when they are called out, if they are not ready to hear what's going on. See if you think Biderman's chart of coercion can be applied to the government's policies. Biderman's chart of coercion. Tool. Isolation. Effect deprives victim of all social supports and of his ability to resist. Develops an intense concern with self. Makes victim dependent upon interrogator. Solitary confinement and isolation. Lockdown effect. Stay at home orders, self-isolation, social distancing, isolation from loved ones. Tool. Monopolization of perception. Effect. Fixes attention upon immediate predicament, fosters introspection. Eliminates stimuli competing with those controlled by captor. Frustrates all actions not consistent with compliance. Physical isolation. Darkness or bright light. Barren environment. Restricted movement. Monotonous food. Lockdown effect. The monopolization of the 24-7 news cycle. Social media flooded with government and public health advertising and messaging. Censorship of alternative viewpoints. The closure of social, cultural, artistic and leisure venues and events. Tool. Induced debility and exhaustion. Effect. Weakens mental and physical ability to resist. Semi-starvation. Exposure. Exploitation of wounds. Induced illness. Sleep deprivation. Prolonged interrogation. Forced writing. Overexertion. Lockdown effect. Isolation and loneliness affect sleep and physical health. Being forced to stay at home and closure of sports affect fitness and health. Tool. Threats. Effect. Cultivates anxiety and despair. Threats of death. Threats of non-return. Threats of endless interrogation and isolation. Threats against family. Vague threats. Mysterious changes of treatment. Lockdown effects. Fines threatened for activities which were previously normal, like working, traveling, seeing friends and family, dating, worship etc. Vague threats of mandated vaccines and vaccine passports create stress. Threats of repeated lockdowns if measures don't work and compliance is not high. 